song? RuneScape. Remember this shit? If you said no, you're lying to me. You know, you remember this. Playing it as a six-year-old, or nine, or ten, whatever, however old you were when you were playing this. Hey, it's the, uh, um, Urban Hazar here. Uh, you got one of them, uh, itchy beards? Yeah, I, I, uh, I had one of those, too, and it was awful. It was, uh, really, really bad. So this is how I fixed it. Oh, uh, oh, this, <laughs> that, okay. Um, yeah, we're not going to talk about that. We're just going to get into the, uh, the informative stuff that matters. Um, yeah, this is how I fix my itchy beard. <laughs> So our skin, on a daily basis, can face a lot of noxious stimuli, which can cause a lot of, you know, unwanted things. We're talking, you know, irritation, we're talking about redness, we're talking about itchiness, we're talking about contact dermatitis, and all the, all the spicy meatballs of growing a beard, all the things that uh, tend to, you know, uh, once men experience these things, they go, well, well, this is, I can't fix this, so gotta take the razor and give it one of these. You know, no half sends, full send, you know, one of these. And guys, that, that sucks. That really sucks because, well, and I know it sucks because I've been going through that phase for the past two weeks now. I had not shaved off my beard for two years. And, you know, I've been going through this phase for about two weeks. And, you know, man, it was just so, so itchy. But my first consolation to you guys, it does get better. It does go away. It's just a matter of knowing how to get through the phase, uh, you know, what products to apply and how to apply them. And I, the Urban Bazaar, have all the answers. I read a boatload of scientific journals on how to alleviate this itchiness, and this evidence-based approach actually made this phase a lot easier for me. So hopefully I can do that for you as well. So before you go out and you buy some overpriced beard oil that's gonna break the bank, you know, that's chock full of ingredients, it's probably gonna make the phase even worse and might even slow your beard growth. And I'll get more into that later. Before you do all that, I'm gonna tell you exactly what you need to do to get through this phase. We're in this together, my friend, right? And uh, again, I worked really hard to put all this together, so, you know, I, I compiled a lot of scientific research and uh, read a lot of things, so hopefully it'll be enough to give me one of these, huh? Uh, give me one of those, huh? So understand that the majority of the reason why you're feeling this itchiness as your beard grows in is due to the penation angle of your hair, how it's growing out of your face, relative to how you shave it off, right? It's inevitable because, well, guys, life is in a straight line, right? Our faces are curved, our follicles are shooting hairs in different directions. It's usually the weight of the hair itself that, you know, weighs down and allows it to fall flat on our faces, you know, on our cheeks, for example. But naturally, when these hairs are shaven off, they're not always shaven off, you know, completely and on a flat plane. Typically what happens is a lot of these hairs become pointed. A lot of them become like little daggers poking out of your skin after you shave, and that's what's causing a lot of the irritation. So guys, it is crucially important that you guys get a proper aftershave that is going to agree with your skin and not just the first one you find, you know, on the shelf, right? Especially with the initial shave, you know, you shave everything down. This is going to be the foundation of your beard. You have to make sure that you're not going to get any, any razor burn or ingrown hairs. That's going to make these daggers poking through your skin a lot, a lot worse. But also, you're going to want to invest in a proper aftershave that's going to agree with your skin for you know, all your shape ups as well. You know, when you do your cheek line, cause you don't want uh, any hairs growing up here and you don't want uh, the hair to crawl too far down your neck as well. So for the shape ups, you're also gonna need an aftershave. So I think it's an incredibly important investment. So initially for my shape ups, you know, for my cheeks and for my neckline, I was using, you know, a commercial aftershave and I was getting a lot of, of you know, inflammation. And in fact, it came to the point where I was almost getting contact dermatitis. And I did some lurking on some forums, and this seems to be a very, very common issue. And even if it doesn't feel like, you know, your aftershave isn't, uh, you know, damaging your skin, it's pretty loaded with chemicals, and I think there are way better alternatives. So the product that popped up again and again in my search for an aftershave alternative uh, is uh, this here, Cosmetic Lad by Lush. 
And I was like, hey, you know, ain't lush for ladies? Like, should I be applying that as a man? And it seemed to be that a lot of men were actually applying this product. So I bought it and lo and behold, all the post shave itch went away. You know, it has a lot of great natural, uh, you know, non-abrasive uh, ingredients. And, you know, it's been a game changer. Lads, your skin is a necessary interface between the internal and external environment. And it needs to be in homeostasis at all times to grow a nice, healthy, full beard. And uh, one of the best ways we can keep our skin in homeostasis is modulating inflammation. Your skin absorbs everything that you put on it. So be kind to the foundation of your beard. Skin that is in a constant state of repair will grow a terrible beard. Hands down, it will grow a terrible beard. And actually, when the skin is in repair, you know, after you shave and you put all those terrible chemicals on your skin barrier, the chemokines uh, that attract white blood cells to the, you know, the site of the infection or, you know, inflammation actually can damage the skin even further. I'm going to link Cosmetic Lad down there in the description. Please use that link and all subsequent links to support this channel. I really want to start upping my content on this channel. I want to do some really crazy things. And I can't really do that if I don't have enough money to buy all the equipment I need to buy. So please, if you like this content, please do that for me. And on top of that, if it, regardless if you're a beardsman that wants to grow a big Viking beard, or if you're a guy that just likes to keep a nice stubble beard, and you, you know, which requires a lot of shape ups, please invest in a good aftershave because the stuff that you find on the shelf typically not so good. So the second thing that you're going to need to you know make this itchy phase a lot easier is a proper beard oil that's going to soften the hairs as they make their violent journey through your epidermis. And what a lot of guys do is they say, all right, I need to find a beard oil. So then they, they find the most premium, expensive, you know, break the bank beard oil, and then they, they purchase it right away, and then they're broke. If you guys have a little extra cash to spend on beard oils, go ahead, guys, knock yourself out. But understand that a lot of these ingredients within a lot of these commercial beard oils may not be what you want. If you guys are anything like me, you know, someone who wants to maximize their beard growth, then perhaps going this less expensive and probably more efficient route may be better for you. Unfortunately, a lot of commercial beard oils are absolutely loaded with very potent dihydrotestosterone blockers, also known as DHT blockers. And if you haven't heard of them already, DHT blockers can slow the progression of your beard quite significantly, depending on how potent that DHT blocker is. Additionally, as a beardsman, I firmly believe that if you want an oil that is going to be the best bang for your buck and you're not paying for all kinds of filler ingredients, uh, the most important things to look for within that oil is its effect on skin barrier repair, antibacterial effect, anti-inflammatory effect, antioxidant effect, wound healing, and skin aging. But the unfortunate reality is that a lot of these filler ingredients within, uh, you know, all of these commercial beard oils, not only are they chock full of DHT blockers, but they're not very multifaceted oils. For the most part, they're only there for aroma purposes, which is great. If you want a, if you want a great smelling beard oil, then go for a commercial beard oil. But if you want to maximize your growth and get the best bang for your buck and not, you know, lose all your money buying beard oils, then take a look at this research. So in this recent 2018 study, the International Journal of Molecular Sciences outlined the effects of different plant oils on skin pathology. And as we can see here, it is in these those same six categories that I mentioned earlier. So if we scroll down, we see a lot of these oils are not very multifaceted. In fact, a lot of them are very, very expensive. Uh, kind of a ripoff, in my opinion. Uh, if you scroll down a little further in the article, you can see a lot of specifics and what each oil does for your skin. So if you're suffering from a, a particular, uh, you know, skin ailment, th this could be a very useful art, uh, you know, very useful uh, scientific journal here. But if we scroll down, we, if we want an all encompassing oil, what we're looking at is coconut oil, right? It's a very, very all encompassing oil. It pretty much, uh, you know, fills every single category except cancer prevention, right? But if we cross-reference it with Beardology.org, Sam for Beardology is giving us a nice list of DHT blockers. And what we see here 
is coconut oil is actually a DHT blocker. It's not, it's not a very strong DHT blocker, however, I think I, I like to, you know, um, be on the safe side and I like to get something like jojoba oil, which is actually very comparable to coconut oil in terms of being multifaceted. And lo and behold, jojoba oil actually has a very strong anti-inflammatory effect, according to this study by Pazar and colleagues. And in addition, it, uh, it is also the oil that most resembles our, the natural oils of our face, which is also amazing. And guys, once I bought jojoba oil, that itchy face just went away right away. It smells amazing. It softens up those hairs i'm gonna put um you know the link in the description for the whole hobo oil that i bought i bought like this this huge 33 ounce jug and i what i do is i just transfer it to these amber vials here and honestly that it's it's about 30 dollars, and it's going to last me at least two to three years and actually it lasts it has a very uh slow degradation rate so it lasts a very very long time so that's through thirty dollars for pretty much endless beard oil guys and you can even throw some peppermint oil in there a peppermint oil has been proved to you know speed up the growth of your beard a little bit and it feels nice uh you know and it freshens up the beard oil a bit so you can mix those two together you know um so I'm gonna put a link of some of some jojoba oil down the you know the big jug that I bought, and also I'm gonna put a smaller one in there, uh, you know, so you guys don't have to actually buy the big jug if you don't want to. Uh, you can buy a smaller one that comes with a dropper. And I know I probably rambled a little too much in this video, gave a little too many details, but I wanted to give you guys the best possible tips and really get into the science of you know why this method works. And uh, hopefully you guys appreciated the little extra effort that I uh, put into it, hopefully enough to give me one of these. And um, yeah, so let's do the, uh, the update of the beard growth here. Week four of beard growth of this Hazar Yeard. So guys, thank you so much for joining me today. These past couple months have been so great. You guys have been so supportive and it's been some of the best months of my life. Honestly, the fact that my YouTube channel has been, uh, you know, as successful as it has been, it's just been wonderful. So thank you guys. And if you guys want to, you know, interact with me a little closer, take a look at our uh, Facebook support community, Beards, Barbells, and Banner. You can take a look at it in the description. And basically, uh, in a nutshell, what we are is we're a support community for people that want to live a life of self-improvement. There's a lot of other things encompassing the group, but take a look at it. Uh, I know that you're going to love it. It's a very positive community. We're a bunch of great guys that just want the best for you. So guys, Please like and share this video and Urban Hazar out. If only I had that RuneScape song to play it again. That would have been <laughs> that would have been sick. See you guys.